Now, growing up on the farm, we had, you know, quite a bit of livestock. You know, we ran about 100 head of cattle. It's <laughs> a lot of hogs, innumerable hogs. But out of all of this livestock, you know, only a few of them actually became kind of special pets. And one of these that did become a pet was Spotty the Holstein. And uh, I was about six years old when Spotty first arrived on our farm. Spotty was a big black and white beauty Holstein. And I remember being all excited when she came. I remember the first time I seen her. And, uh, of course, I was wanting to learn how to milk, of course, you know. But Dad would say, nah, you're too young. And he used to tell me stuff like that when I was just a wee little, little kid like that. But I remember being kind of disappointed about it. Anyhow, it was kind of fun to watch Dad milk and the cats had all gathered around. And uh, every once in a while, Dad would uh, take a shot at squirting at one of the cats and the cats would uh, stand up and open their mouth. And <laughs> Dad would shoot milk in their mouth. That was pretty fun to watch. Of course, uh, I also watched the bucket get kicked and stuff like that. Of course, Dad had cow kickers that he would put on, which is little chain things that, that hooked into her legs and went around to limit her kicking. And I'd watch him get swatted by her tail. Anyhow, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> Anyhow, I, of course, did eventually learn how to milk, which was all part of growing up on the farm and having all this livestock. Spotty was basically, we only ran one milk cow usually. I mean, we didn't have a big milking operation or anything. It was, you know, cow-calf. And we'd feed some out, you know. And uh, feed them out to, you know, butcher weight. Then we'd sell them. That's what we usually did. Anyhow, when I was somewhere around 10, you know, the neighbor kids and I used to roam around the farms together, you know, because, yeah, what else was there to do? We, of course, we'd always get, find something to do. I mean, my gosh, in the summer, we'd just kind of wander all over. And, uh, well, we'd wander out to the pasture Spotty paw the ground throwing dirt over her back and then she'd lower her head and snort and, and uh, I recall the fear that would pucker our stomachs and we'd shake our knees until our boots rattled. We all kind of gave Spotty a wide berth. Of course, you know, being little kids, we, we didn't know. But eventually, of course, we got to the point where we learned we could... Uh, just jump right up on Spotty and ride her around the pasture. Of course, we didn't guide her. Spotty just kind of went wherever she wanted to. I mean, she had a mind of her own. But she was a nice, gentle cow. But anyhow, at about 15, I started to show cattle at fairs. And I'd never broke cattle to lead. And... I really wasn't having any success. We, somebody told us to uh, take the, the show cattle and, and tie them on the back of the tractor and drag them up and down the road. 
So we attempted that, and by golly, uh, they did not like being drugged behind the 4020 John Deere at all. I mean, I was afraid the first one we tried that on was going to break her fool neck. It was a heifer. She was a real nice one. And uh, so, anyhow, in the Sunday paper, the Des Moines Register there, uh, I happened to read an article about a guy that used a donkey to break his show cattle. And what he would do was tie the show cattle to the the, the uh, halter on the donkey and and then the donkey would break the cattle of course we didn't have a donkey but the idea hit me that that we had spotty and you know she was halter broke so after i hit on that i didn't have any trouble breaking cattle to lead all we did was tie the unbroken bovine to Spotty's halter, lead them up and down the road, and in no, no time at all, we were leading Spotty and having whatever we were breaking follow right behind her, somebody else leading that one, and, and it just didn't take any time at all that they were leading like they were born to it. And this gave me like immense satisfaction, which I never missed a chance to brag that up to whomever would listen to me. And of course, you know, it was a good idea and it, it worked really good. So it gave me some success in the showing cattle anyway. Anyhow, one day I was about 21 and I'd been breaking heifers to lead and well, I would got tired of it and I tied Spotty up to the windmill so because there was tall grass around there and I was thinking that that uh, that Spotty could just hang out there and eat that tall grass and, and uh, under the windmill, there's a big old hand dug well that was six foot across. And uh, so, anyhow, I went out and I mowed the road with the 4010 John Deere, which I thought needed done after leading the cattle up and down the road. I got to looking at it and it was bothering me. So, so when I got done mowing the road and I pulled back in the driveway, Anyhow, I shut the tractor off. I, I didn't see Spotty anywhere. Nowhere, and I'm thinking, well, Spotty must have got loose. So I'm looking around for Spotty, and then I hear this eerie sound coming from the well. And it goes, and There, you know, I'm going, what the heck? Anyhow, I, I jumped off the tractor and, and ran over to the well, and there was Spotty, hanging from her hindquarters from a pipe in the well. Anyhow, she was just, you know, pretty scared, and she was going, mm -hmm. <laughs> So, there she hung. Well, our scoop tractor, we had taken the scoop off of it because that's also the tractor that we cultivated with, was the 60 John Deere. And so I couldn't use that to lift her out of the well, but I knew our neighbor, Dixon Terry, had, had a loader on his tractor, so I jumped into my trusty Ford Maverick and zoomed over to his farm. I told Dixon what had happened and that I needed his scoop tractor to rescue Spotty. So he rushed right out to his tractor and came right over as quickly as the WD Alice would run. So, anyhow, when we arrived back at the well, we found that the pipe had broken. 
and the only thing we could see its body was her nose barely sticking out of the water. And of course that pipe came from another well and that had a pump and that pump was pumping water right into that well through the broken pipe that Spotty was in. So I went down and shut the pump off at the other well and Dixon climbed down into the well to hook the chain around Spotty's neck to prevent her nose from going under the water and I hooked the other end up to the windmill so we had her chained up to the windmill and I ran into the house and called the tow truck there at Stewart and explained to the guy that I had a cow in the well and I wanted him to come out well of course the guy at the other end of the phone he didn't know it was an emergency I think he was thinking the cow was dead so he had all kinds of time to do it so he told me it'd be two or three hours before he could get out there. And I told him, you know, she's still alive and I'm trying to save her. So I could tell his voice perked up a lot. And he told me, I'll be right out. So the tow truck roared into the driveway, throwing a thick cloud of dust. And he backed up and swung the boom over the well. And then just, you know, none time at all, Spotty was suspended in the air by her neck. And he laid her gently on the ground and unhooked the cable. And poor old Spotty just laid there and shivered violently. Just, she was shaking like, you know, boy, she had a powerful chill. And, so I called the veterinarian and described what had happened. And he came out and gave Spotty a shot and prescribed a shot of the same stuff every day for a week, which I, of course, got the task of shooting her, which I've got needle phobia, and I don't even like to give the livestock shots. But, you know, now I'm to the point where I have to give myself shots. So when you got to do it, you just got to man up and do it. There's just no way, two ways about it. Even though I hate needles and I hate giving shots, I've done it lots of times to livestock. So, you know, actually I ought to get used to it. But, you know, that's just my own personal phobia. And so, anyhow, Spotty... Spotty recovered pretty well, except she had a limp, and the limp just would not go away. And poor old Spotty was limping, and, and uh, excuse me here just a minute, but my throat is getting dry. Gotta, gotta energize myself with a little coffee there. Anyhow, one morning, my dad started running around the house early in the morning and he was yelling, Balloons! Balloons! And out of the south came an army of hot air balloons. And they were going over the ridge and right over the pasture. Of course, Creston has those balloon days. And <laughs> and so that's what it was. Them balloons were coming. And they were just, I mean, they just happened to go right over the pasture. And, of course, they'd come up over the rise, and they'd make a big noise. They'd be going, and they'd be going, and them cows were all convinced that they were some new kind of cow-eating dragon. So they were running back and forth in a frenzied panic from one end of the pasture to the other bellering all the way at the top of their voices. They were just running back and forth. They didn't know what to do. And by golly, after that, Spotty never limped again. Whatever they done, they, they worked the limp right out of Spotty. <laughs> Well, that was that was pretty good, I thought. 
And uh, I never got a chance to thank them balloon guys, but, you know. Anyhow, you know, at this point, we really weren't milk and spotty anymore, but, you know, we were, uh, we'd use her as a nurse cow. Because there, there'd always seem to be one or two calves that somehow ended up not nursing on their mother. You know, uh, whether the mother would die or she wouldn't claim them, I don't know. But uh, I remember one time, and my, of course, my sister and brother-in-law lived over there in the city in Davenport, or Bettendorf was actually where they lived. But, but uh, they come come to visit one time, and of course, Spotty was out there in the pasture. And, being a black and white Holstein, she happened to have one black calf and one white calf nursing on her. And my young nephew, just a, he was just a little guy at the time. Anyhow, Eric, to him, that made perfectly good sense because a black and white cow really ought to have one white and one black calf. Anyhow, uh, Spotty, Spotty lived, you know, a few more years, and uh, it, I remember one fall we had the cattle preg tested, and the vet said she wasn't going to have a calf, and so, you know, we usually, if the vet said somebody wasn't going to have a calf, we would get rid of that cow, you know, take her to the sale barn. But Spotty, we were so attached to Spotty that, that we kept her, even though she wasn't going to have a calf. But uh, you know what? Spotty amazed us again because that spring, Spotty had twins. And, uh, you know, by golly, it was a bad thing, though, because that was just too much for her. And she got down and couldn't get up after, after having birth. And we had the vet come out. and He thought maybe if we uh, could suspend her, you know, somehow and, and get her up. And, uh, you know, for a few hours a day, she might come out of it. So we had big round balers, so we had some baler belts, of course, that we'd replace belts, so we had these belts laying around, and, and I hit on the idea to make some straps, to make kind of a harness for Spotty, to uh, hang her from the loader of the 60 John Deere. So I made those, and we'd... Uh, we would suspend her for a few hours a day hoping that she'd come out of it, but she never did. She died, and that was, that was the end of Spotty. Well, anyhow, that, uh, that's some pretty pleasant memories of, of some of the stuff I did and, and memories of growing up on the farm and my dad and, and neighbors that that are also dead, dad's dead, Dixon's dead, you know, but uh, it was a good life, and I miss those days, but there's no going backwards, you can only go forward, so I thank you for watching, and have a good day, bye-bye. And this is a picture I'm putting up on the screen of Dad and, and Spotty and some other, you know, cows we had at the feed bunk. One of our little, this was one of our little feed bunks. We had bigger ones, but okay. And I just thought I'd show you a picture of, of them. So... Thanks again for watching, and bye.